Okay, today I've got a debate for you. We're talking about the difference between a heat pump and a good old fashioned hot water tank with an element in it, a real basic one. I've brought in Carl Jensen today from iStore. Carl Jensen uh, is on, I reckon, every forum that you can get that's got anything to do with renewable energy. Yeah, I've been doing it for a, a long time, like yourself. So uh, I, I'm really passionate about the industry and I'm passionate about uh, saving emissions for Australians and saving them money. And how long have you been working for iStore now? Uh, 12 months. And you're a massive advocate of heat pumps. And you know, for a long time, I've been a massive advocate of not doing a heat pump. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. It's going to be a good debate. Let's start it off with a really basic um, explanation of what we're talking about, heat pumps versus elements. So that, that old tank that heats up your hot water that you've had forever, unless you're using gas or something like that, this is how simple it is, right? You've got a tank, a big tank like your kettle, you know, stands this tall, and then you've got an element in it, and you have a thermostat attached to it, so when, when it gets hot enough, it switches off. That's how simple a tank is. And Carl, this is why I love a tank, is because, you know, you're an, you're an aircraft engineer is your background, yep. right? You understand uh-huh. that simplicity just works, right? Yep. Indeed. Mm. However, uh, we're at the point now where the, uh, the technology is there to make hot water far more efficiently. So um, everybody's familiar with air conditioners. Um, not many people have air conditioners fail that often, and uh, ultimately they provide hot water with four times less energy than a resistive element can. They use about a quarter of the energy, which is obviously why the argument, the simple argument for heat pumps kind of works. But um, I think I want to go through all the factors because, you know, the fact that it uses less energy isn't everything because how long do they last? And so, Carl, why is it that every every plumber down to a T, and I reckon there's been sort of 10 over the last several years that I've asked and plenty in the last couple of weeks leading up to this debate, Every single plumber hates heat pumps. Uh, A lot of them thought that they needed a refrigeration licence in order to be able to install a heat pump, which isn't the case. Um, Most heat pumps uh, are either all-in-one or they use uh, hot water transfer via a pump between a a separate unit and the tank. Uh, So they don't actually need a refrigeration licence to install one. And then second to that is that they didn't have the skill. They thought that they didn't have the skills to maintain them. Uh, whereas in reality, the heat pump itself um, will run for 15,000 hours uh, before it's physically worn out. And that's the same kind of lifetime as you've got out of a normal tank. And we're talking sort of, you know, that depends where you are, but maybe 15, 10 or 15 years you're talking heat pump. Yeah, so in Melbourne, family of four, something around 11, mm-hmm. 11 and a half, 12 years. And up here in Queensland, probably closer to 15 years. So we're talking about... Fairly big financial savings would be the first point, but we need to talk about the cost of the tank, but we'll get that to that too. And your biggest reason for heat pumps is more about the environment. Absolutely. So uh, last year, Australia's emissions didn't go down. They still climbed. Um, and Australia's got 11 million households, 11.5 million households, which mm. is a hell of a lot. Um, half of those are using gas to heat their hot water and the other half are using resistive electric elements. And we can reduce Australia's emissions by around 10% if we take all of those old technologies out and replace them with heat pumps. You know, and I'm probably not even going to argue on this point. I reckon even if I said that a heat heat pump lasts half the time of a tank, which I'm not going to go that far, uh, then you win the the environmental argument hands down anyway, right? So if you're buying a hot water system for environmental reasons and you're not too concerned about financials, I'm going to agree with Carl and just say, get a heat pump. But I think there's a lot more into it, into that. Not everyone just buys, you know, throws extra money out for environmental reasons, okay? Yep, I don't disagree. Um, on the same token, um, you know, we talk about batteries a lot in our industry as well. Mm. Um, a heat pump or any hot water service can be considered the same as a battery because we can use it as a solar sink during the day, yep. put energy into it, and then use it later on at night. Um, obviously, resistive electric beats gas in that scenario because yes, yeah. you can't use your solar system to generate any gas, but we can use it to put energy in the hot water service. So we've got, if we've got an abundance of uh, cheap solar energy, then resistive element doesn't look so bad. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we'll sort of get into that, and I think that might be a little bit where we differ. Um, 
So, okay, I'm just going to, let's talk about the different factors. And I've done up a calculator. We've yep. both put in our figures here and we're going to show it up on the screen as we talk. Um, I'm going to, by the way, I'll put this um, calculator online. There'll be a link below and it'll be in, in my blog. We might do a little bit of a blog about this debate as well. But if you want to use this calculator to put your own figures in, you can get to it. But what I want to do is talk about the main factors. So one of them is how much hot water to use, right? So Very important. Yeah, so ultimately... Um, Australian standard says that everybody uses 50 litres of hot water a day. So I'm going to start inputting our figures into the um, this calculator as we go along. Um, and we're only using seven kilowatt hours a day. Take in mind, we're in Brisbane. The water isn't as cold up here the as it is down in Melbourne. Cold. Indeed. Now, let's divide that by four if you're using a heat pump. Mm -hmm. Simple yep. maths, we both agree on. So um, you'll use 1.75 kilowatt hours of power a day. Okay, now the other factors that come into play is the price of power. So the price of grid power, we're just going to set this as standard over the next 10 years. Obviously, who knows whether compared to your wages, electricity is going to go up or down, but we've agreed that we're just going to lock in a price. Ultimately, as the cost of energy goes up, the more efficient um, devices and more efficient means of using energy becomes more and more cost effective. It does, yeah. But you're, you're, you're going to concede and you're just going to go along yep. with me and say, we're just going to call electricity even. You can jump into this calculator and put your own figures in if you want uh, with the link below. But solar feed-in tariff, um, I'm going to say $0.08. Cents. We've agreed on that. You know, number. The percent that it's supplied by solar. So I've got at home, I've got 17 kilowatts of solar. I've got a Fronius hot water diverter. So what that does is it says, um, okay, I'm sending back one kilowatt Back to the grid at the moment. No, no, we're going to send that to the hot water tank. Now I'm sending three kilowatts. We'll send that to the hot water tank. So it follows your ex excess. And effectively, all it's doing is saying, I'm only sending excess solar power to my hot water tank. So because I've, well, I didn't pay for this, but because I've got the luxury of having a really expensive hot water diverter, um, in my case, I'm using, I, I would say, 95% of my hot water is heated by solar power. I'm going to say, and I'm going to be a little bit generous in my case, and say that if a customer puts a catch relay in, which is a smart timer, let's just call it, right? So so the, the hot water turns on when you've got enough surplus solar power, but it doesn't follow that curve. I'm going to say that 80% will be heated by solar, okay? Sounds good. We're going to keep on going down. And uh, the cost of the tank over 10 years. Now, this is interesting, Carl. So... How long is uh, iStore going to last? iStore's been in the market already for eight years. We've used the same tank manufacturer for 12 years now. We've never had a tank failure. Never had a tank failure. Correct. Okay. Okay, but what about, so this is my um, simple grief, I guess, is a heat pump is basically bolting an air conditioner onto a tank uh, and then expecting that heat pump to last, what are you saying, 12 15, years or something? 15,000 hours, yeah. Yeah, 15,000 hours which is 10 to 15 years or something. Roughly, yeah, look, right? we've got them installed in commercial applications as well and things like um, uh, hotels. And in those scenarios where they're running a lot more, uh, the warranty's 15,000 hours. So we can use that in five years if you want. Right, okay, sure. So it really depends. Use case. On use case, okay. So what I'm going to do here, and in my calculation, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, ice door heat pump is going to last 10 years. Sure which is double the length of the warranty, which yep. I think is sort of fine. Yep. And I'm going to say a tank. Tanks used to last um, 20, 25 years. I've rep repaired one. You pointed out to me that was a good old copper tank. Yeah. Um, and when I was talking to my mate Julian, well, we were both talking to Julian Saxby, who's an um, expert solar uh, hot water installer and repairer. So he's got a lot of experience on fixing these things, you know. He's sort of saying, yeah, agreeing with you that maybe they're not lasting as long. And I'm going to go out there and say 15 years. I'd go so far as to say even if the heat pump did fail, there's a backup element there and if you couldn't afford to replace it and it was physically worn out, you've made your savings three times over and if you made your savings three times over, you can buy another one. But if you can't, there's an element there and it'll last just as long as your electric element. Yep, exactly. That is that is a really good point, I think. Let's say I'm right and your system fails in 10 years and my system fails in 15 years. When, when I'm saying failing, I'm only saying about the heat pump part, the air conditioner that's bolted onto the side. Sure. You've still got an element down the bottom. And as long as that tank lasts, it's going to last as long as mine, theoretically. So yep. it can last 15 years anyway. 
won't be running as efficiently. You'll be going old school like me. We'll be using four times as much energy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, our power bills will go up, so you might want to go and buy another one at that stage. Okay, so um, we've put in put into our calculator our differences there, 10 versus 15. Um, I'm going to throw in here that I need to put a hot water uh, diverter on there, or not a hot water diverter, kind of like a timer, which is a catch solar relay. I'll link to a video explaining what that is up there. But basically, like I mentioned before, it's a smart timer uh, that will come on and turn on when you've got enough. But let's say then you go and turn on your oven or a cloud comes over, it'll see that you're not sending enough power off, so it'll switch the system off and on. And so my calculation is saying four th hot water, including the tank, including the, the relay and everything like that, that catch relay is going to cost the customer $4,310 in 10 years. For the heat pump, it's going to co cost 4152 so obviously those figures are so. <laughs> so you win by two hundred bucks. I win by two hundred bucks. There's not much in it. Uh, you know that's just so arbitrary, but basically about the same, right? Um, yeah. With my figures of using fairly conservative amounts of hot water, and rigging all the figures in my yeah. favour, so right? It, <laughs> at, sure. Yeah. In, in Brisbane, cold water inlet temperatures warmer. Uh, you don't need as long a shower. Uh, you have more sun and available for your solar system. Oh man, don't tell Carl, but I actually just found an error in my formula. Uh, the cost of old school hot water was more like $5,600 over 10 years. So Carl wins even better. But let's go on to your figures um, and we'll go, we'll just go through this really quickly, yeah, sure. right? We understand how the calculator works. You're going to say 14 kilowatts. 14 kilowatt hours in, uh, in Victoria for sure. Yeah, you've got to keep Four people in the house, 200 litres of hot water a day. Yep. Sure, and that's that's a, another way of looking at it. That's fair, right? And so if you are doing that with a heat pump, you're using a quarter of that, three and a yep. half kilowatts. Three and a half. So three in summer and four in winter, and that's just because the cold water inlet temperature in winter is 10 degrees cooler. Uh, you're going to agree, agree with me on the price of power, yep. as we've said. Now, what do you think is realistic for um, the percentage that you're going to do if you're installing a resistive tank and a catch relay or a timer or something like that? Yeah, in Victoria it's much less. So we have 180 days of overcast weather a year um, and in overcast conditions in Victoria a, a solar system will only make 1.3 kilowatt hours per kilowatt installed on the roof. So yep. if I had a 5 kilowatt solar system in winter it only makes 6.5 kilowatt hours whereas yeah. in Brisbane Up 5 here. kilowatt system or 6 kilowatt system. Yeah, yeah, we're still doing way more than that, you know, 15 kilowatt hours for that sort of um, uh, you know, even in winter. So, so that skews the economics enormously. Skews it massively. So you're going to say, you had put in here 0.7, I reckon that's a little bit too generous on my side. Okay. For Queensland, 0.7, we'll, we'll, we'll give you that. Down in Melbourne, I'd say it's more likely 0.2. You're, yeah. Okay, 0.2, right. But you're going to be generous on this, right? Because it's yep. going to work for you anyway. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're good. We're uh, generous with, with everything. Okay. And in my, we won't explain exactly how we've worked this out, but you're going to say... 12 years, okay, and versus maybe 15 years from yep. a tank. We're still talking fairly similar pretty here, close. right? So Pretty close. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, the cost of a timer, we've, for me, you've still got to throw that cost in, 800 bucks. Yep. Now, this is interesting. Check this out, the difference in price. So for hot water, if we were to do it with your maths, cost of my hot water is going to cost me pretty much eight grand, 7,900 bucks. The cost of your hot water, drum roll, is going to cost just over half that. $4,800. Pretty compelling case. Uh, so um, I didn't think the numbers would be as different Queensland to Melbourne, but mm. I'll, I'll definitely accept that because the sun shines here. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. in Melbourne. <laughs> Just to add insult to injury, I made the same, same area here. It's more like $9,900 for 10 years for old school hot water. So, Carl, I've really enjoyed this last week, thinking through this and talking to people that I respect in the industry. Julian Saxby, and I've got to give him a plug, um, from Brisbane Solar Repairs, uh, who works in Brisbane, a great heat pump advocate. Um, and I trust him because, as I was saying before, he does a lot of maintenance on systems, so he gets to see what goes wrong with different systems. He's a big fan of iStore compared to other heat pumps, I've got to say, as well. Look, at the end of the day, the iStore is built to be a tractor. It's a very simple machine. It's the simplest form of uh, heat pump 
that you can get it has an AC induction motor, which is very simple, the same as your swimming pool pump yep. that everyone's familiar with. And in terms of its design, it uh, wraps the evaporator coil, uh, sorry, the condenser coil around the outside of the tank, mm. which means that there's no heat exchanger that can get uh, calcium build up. Um, wow. And there's never any chance that a failure of the heat exchanger would put gas or compressor oil into the water. So it's very safe. Um, and there isn't a, uh, a, a simple heat exchanger. It's physically wrapped around the outside of the tank. So it's tough to see that wearing out. Carl, I think we have a winner here. <laughs> and and I'm afraid it's not me. <laughs> Clear winners, the heat pump. Uh, yeah. So ultimately, um, you know, everybody's probably seen me on socials and they, uh, they know that I'm a big, big advocate for electric vehicles because they're just so cheap to run and there's so little maintenance. So anything that we can do to accelerate the transition and save people money so that they can get to that end goal of having an electric car is uh, is of advantage. And if we've got something like a heat pump that can save the same amount of energy as what their electric car uses every day, um, we, we really are transforming Australia's energy future. Yeah. And I guess where my mindset, and, and I've sort of reflected on why I've been <laughs> stubborn about this, is that I've seen a lot of heat pumps come and go, right? And plumbers hate them. And part of the reason that plumbers hate them is cheap rubbish heat pumps are installed and they fail, you know? This was also before solar, so before we could throw in the figures of solar and you know and, and get the whole picture together as we have now. I think we're, we're living in a different age where heat pumps have developed, especially if you're dealing with a decent brand like iStore. Uh, they're not going to fail on you in, in three or five years like they maybe used to. Oh, I'm sure, Mark, you've read the book by Saul Griffith called The Big Switch, and that is the goal of electrifying everything that we do. So... Um, We've got a lot of gas in use in Australia. Half of the hot water services in Australia are fired by gas. Mm. And obviously uh, you can't make energy with your solar system to feed a gas hot water service. So anytime you've got a gas hot water service, you definitely change it out for a heat pump. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like even on my conservative figures, which are pretty even even, I reckon switching to a heat pump anyway, just for environmental reasons, even if you don't want to pay for that, well, you're not really paying more even on my numbers. So... So thanks for coming, Carl. No and I reckon we should head out for lunch, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thanks for having me. Thanks, mate.